each and every one on his blog and on YouTube. He uh, got divorced, ended his 25 years financial services career when the market, sh- market crashed in 2008, and he was diagnosed with leukemia. So he decided, I'm going to go out and have some fun. So he has logged more than 50,000 miles trying cheesesteaks from Bear, Delaware, up to Princeton, New Jersey. And he has just compiled his first annual best of list. And uh, he says he doesn't eat the whole cheesesteak. He eats about half because you would think that he would be like the size of a house, but he's really not. He looks like a normal-sized guy. He says he eats half of it, and then he gives the other half half to a homeless person each day. He says he's not even close to being done. The mission will continue. So I'm curious to see this list when it comes out. I don't think it's out yet. It could be. It could be out yet, but I'm not sure. So there is some of the uh, the news of the day, some of the funny news and entertaining news. And I wanted to talk, of course, about my topic, which everybody seemed to enjoy, which I love, of course. I was talking about The Lion King the other day. So excited for the live action version of The Lion King. I told you how much of a fan of The Lion King I was. And it's funny because it was on television last week. It was during one of the days where we were having a lot of storms. So it kept getting interrupted with uh, tornado warning uh, interruptions. And, um, you know, that's obviously a very worthy cause to interrupt. But I was somewhat annoyed because what I found out by watching this movie, and my husband's so sweet, he was getting ready to go to bed. And I typically go to bed either with him or, you know, about a half hour after him. I don't stay up typically too much longer after him, but I don't always go to bed right away. Um, So he had said, hey, babe, you know the Lion King's on tonight? I was like, no, I didn't know that. He goes, I recorded it for you. I was like, well, I can watch it. He goes, yeah, but in case you, you know, you go to bed before the ending's over. And I was like, oh, that's so nice. I mean, I do know how it ends, but. So I went ahead and uh, I ended up watching the whole thing. I stayed up until a whopping 10 o'clock that night. I'm not sure why. But I figured out that I still know almost every line to that movie. I'm like just saying the lines along with them. It's surprisingly embarrassing. Well, I guess that's not too much of a surprise. But I was surprised that I still remembered the words so well because it's been so long since I've watched it. Now, don't get me wrong. I've probably watched this movie 200 times. So it's not a shock that I would have known all of the words at one point. And again, I don't have kids. I didn't have any kids making me watch this movie. (laughs) I just watched it over and over and over again because I loved it so much. So I asked everyone, is there a movie you have seen so often You can almost recite all the lines, and there is a lot of people who have watched movies over and over again. Bud says, Uncle Buck, and then uh, Kirsty responds to that, I'm assuming is a line from the movie. I have never seen Uncle Buck. I know, I know, not really my kind of movie. Uh, Maybe I'll get around to it one of these days, but Kirsty said, who let the cat out? We don't have a cat. I'm assuming that's a line from the movie. Jim says, Goodfellows. But the movie I have seen the most number of times in my life is the original Karate Kid with Ralph Macchio. Remember, he had such a good little career going, and then he just kind of fell off the face of the earth. Mark says, Monty Python's The Holy Grail, another movie I have not seen. Now, Lisa says Steel Magnolias, and I'm surprised that Jim did not bring that up because I happen to know he loves Steel Magnolias. Lori says, Animal House and Grease. Beverly says, Overboard, the original with Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn. Michelle says, I'm going to have to say The Sound of Music while hanging her head in shame. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. The Sound of Music was the very first DVD I ever purchased. Love that movie. Donna says, 16 Candles and 48 Hours. Chelsea says, Sweet Home Alabama, Titanic and Pretty Woman. Donna responded to Chelsea and said, Chelsea, you have a baby in a bar, which is from Sweet Home Alabama. I have seen that movie a bunch. I loved that movie. I have that on 
I think I had it on VHS, so I don't know if I have it on DVD now. Linda says Grease. Cannoli says American Hustle. And, of course, the Brat Pack movies, Breakfast Club, Pretty in Pink, and Sixteen Candles. Blaine? Blaine? That's not a name. That's a household appliance. Something like that. Uh, with Ducky, who is, um, of course, John Cryer, who is now more well-known for the absolutely annoying person from Two and a Half Men. Teresa says, Smokey and the Bandit. Never saw that. Now, Diane says, oh, this is a good one. An affair to remember. Cary Grant and Deborah Kerr, my favorite movie ever. Now, a friend of mine purchased that movie for me when I was obsessed with Sleepless in Seattle because they refer to that movie in Sleepless in Seattle. And, you know, they're constantly talking about it. So a friend of mine had purchased that for me for Christmas, I believe, one year. And um, what a great movie. Oh, my goodness. Should it, do you like beer? Because they have, like, you know, very high... Um, tastes and expensive tastes and thought, you know, maybe we can stop drinking champagne and start drinking beer. Do you like beer? I think I could drink beer. So, um, yeah, I recommend that one wholeheartedly. Such a great movie. Josh says Animal House. I am sure I've seen parts of Animal House. I don't know if I've ever seen it all the way through. Grease says Lisa. Larry says Goodfellas, so we've heard that a couple of times. Now, Joe says Last of the Mohicans and The Hunt for Red October. Oh, and A Knight's Tale. I'm glad he threw that in the at the end because Joe is my brother, and he forced me to watch A Knight's Tale one time when we were visiting. And it, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. It was pretty entertaining. But you know, you know what it's like when you just love a movie so much and you do make people watch it, and you're like, oh, I hope they like it. I hope they like it. I hope they like it. Um, it was interesting. Yeah, it's not typically my type of movie, but it was pretty good. Kim says Pretty Woman. Dennis says Rat Race and Heavy Metal. I don't know if I'm familiar with those movies. Mandy says Jaws. Ba-dum, 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 ba-dum. Yeah, that sounded nothing like the Jaws theme. Wilbur says Casablanca. Never seen Casablanca. Uh, Dawn says Beauty and the Beast. I don't know if I've ever seen the movie Beauty and the Beast. I saw it on Broadway, which was fantastic. So I'm not sure if I ever saw Beauty and the Beast, the actual movie. I can tell you that I still have never seen The Little Mermaid. I know. I know. I don't know what's wrong with me. And Lauren finishes off with Steel Magnolias. So a lot of people watch a lot of movies over and over and over again. I have to see a movie at least two or three times before I even remember it. Like, people will be like, oh, did you see Goodfellas? I'm like, yeah, but I only saw it once, so I don't really remember a lot of it because I have to watch it. I have a bad memory, and I just don't remember things unless it's repetitive over and over and over again. I did just watch Goodfellas for the first time recently. Uh, We were talking about it a lot where I was working, and I was like, you know what? And then it became um, a free movie on HBO, which we do still have. We're going to probably have to get rid of soon. Not until Big Little Lies comes on, though. Big Little Lies coming up soon. So um, I probably will watch that movie again at some point because it was really good. Very interesting movie. Now I understand why everybody loves it. Another movie that um, I didn't hear, and I probably could recite a lot of lines to, Um, And I know everybody that has seen this agrees it is one of the best movies ever, The Shawshank Redemption. Oh, such a great movie. They say that that did not do well at the box office because of the name of the movie. People didn't know what it was about. And it's kind of a shame. Uh, But people who have caught on, because that's been out forever now, like 20 years or something. So if you have not seen that, put it on your list. The Shawshank Redemption. It's a great movie for whatever kind of movies you like. On to my blog blog post for today. It is Friday, and hopefully I will figure out how to start speaking properly by Monday. We're talking about bad behaviors this week, bad behaviors that you want to get rid of to stop doing it. Today we are going to talk about wallowing, one of my favorite things to do in the past. Wallowing, feeling sorry for yourself, playing the victim, Where does this behavior get you? Well, it keeps you down, for sure. So when something bad happens, it is okay to feel sad, mad, victimized, but give yourself a deadline. Only allow yourself to wallow for 
a certain period of time. Make it a short period of time. Feel the feelings, move through them, and then take action to improve your life. I've never been one that's good with feel the feelings. I hear people, you have to feel the feelings and embrace the pain before you can let it go. Yeah, I've never been able to really figure out how to do that. And then when I do, it seems that I get stuck in it. Like when I broke, when, when me and one of my bro- boyfriends broke up, I swear it took me longer to get over the relationship than it actually the relationship was. I just couldn't kind of dig myself out of the misery of it. An- yet another breakup that I had gone through. Now it ended very badly, which does leave a bad taste in your mouth. But I remember it was when I was moving back to Pennsylvania and I didn't think about it much. I didn't wallow in it. But what I did do is this is when Grey's Anatomy was first starting out. And I had purchased the second season on DVD. And this is the season when, what was her name? Izzy was with that guy, Dennis. Denny, I think was his name. And she got all involved with him, and she wanted, they were going to get married, and then he ended up passing away. And it was so emotional. And, you know, I just watched that season over and over and over again. And I would cry and cry. And I think that was maybe my way of mourning the relationship that I had gotten out of. Because um, I did do a lot of crying, but it was for um, Izzy and Denny. Not for my horrific ex-boyfriend. Um, that season of Grey's Anatomy is also the reason that I named my girl Tucker. Because Bailey had her baby boy that season and she named him Tucker. And I was like, oh, that's such a great name for a dog. And it is. It's a very popular name for a dog. And I had been planning on getting a boy dog. And then when I got to you know where I was going... The little girl dog stuck out to me, so I tried to come up with different names, but I just kept going back to Tucker, and I said, I don't care if it's a boy dog's name, I'm naming her Tucker, and Tucker she is, Tucker she has been, and Tucker she will always be. Speaking of breakups, is that something that you're going through? Is it something that you didn't want? Yeah, that totally sucks. I say there is nothing worse in this world than heartbreak. It is just all-consuming. Takes such a toll on your psyche, makes you feel so bad about yourself that the person you love doesn't want to be with you anymore. And of course, it is the most personal thing that can happen. It's it can't be anything but personal. So if someone chooses to live their life without you, there is nothing you can do to change their mind. Don't even try. Maybe they will realize it at some point what they lost. Maybe they won't. But you have to do you. You have to get to work on moving on with your life regardless of what happens. Sitting around feeling sorry for yourself only keeps you stuck in that despair and depression. Get on a dating site. Go out with friends. Find a new hobby. Get busy doing something that will change your focus. And, you know, if, if you're hit really hard with it, which, you know, I've been there, and you, you know, have to take more than, say, two weeks to wallow, which is a long time. Two weeks is a long time to lose sitting around feeling sorry for yourself. Give yourself a certain time period each day. All right. I'm going to wake up in the morning and I'm going to be sad for the first 10 minutes. Then I'm going to shake it off, do a Taylor Swift style, and get to live in my best life for the rest of the day. If that's what you need to do, that's okay. Put a time limit on it. Have you been treated unfairly in some situation? Go ahead. Get mad. Feel the injustice. You know, sometimes life just sucks and it is most certainly not fair. But wallowing in that information isn't going to make anything better in your life. In fact, it will make it worse by keeping you bitter, unhappy, and resentful. If there is something you can do or try to do to right the injustice, do it. Take action if that's going to make you feel better. If there isn't anything you can do, try to let it go. Try to move on and realize this is just a chapter ending in your book of life. Time to move on to the next chapter. Did a friend cut you out of their life and no matter what you do or say, it doesn't make a difference? Well, move on. Realize you made your case. If they can't see the worth in you and your friendship, then it's time to find someone who does. 
or cherish the friends that you still have. I've always said how surprised I am. 